Well, Bryce, congratulations on a, a very impressive victory over a very game opponent. How are you uh, feeling about your performance tonight? Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I'm feeling very good. Um, just a little bit swole up, but uh, you know, a lot of people when they fight him get carried out and shit. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I could, I feel like I could tighten up on in that performance. And um, but like I said, I'm, I'm just lucky that I, I could walk out of there and I'm conscious and uh, nothing broke. I don't think so. I'm happy. I was going to ask you. I noticed you were moving a little gingerly there to get in the chair. As you said, a lot of people get hurt against him. But do you think it's anything that's going to keep you out for any length of time, or, or what is the condition right now? Oh, it's going to be a while. But just I'm going to need a little bit of time, you know, just the ice stuff and whatnot. But um, um, I'm okay. Nice. Any surprises at all? I mean, you, you lived up to You said you'd strike with him. You did. You, obviously, your ground game was there. But, I mean, any surprises in the performance tonight from him or from you? I'm surprised I couldn't check his leg kicks. It's just like I kind of resorted to uh, just getting the hell out of the way because in my, in my head I'm like, oh, I'm going to hold my ground and check his leg kicks. And it's just like I don't know how the hell um, – he was doing that, but I would go to check and it just didn't work. And um, so I just resorted just moving out of the way completely. That's always a good strategy when something big is coming at you, if you can, you know. Yeah. And you uh, showed a lot of respect afterwards. I'm just curious if you could share the details of that conversation, kind of what was shared there. Um, right after the fight, I just said that how much I respected him. I told him he was a legend, and then he said he respected me as well. And I said, I just love that, um, you know, you got wife and kids. I said, that's something that's just, uh, you know, I'd love to be there at that point in my life one day, you know, so I can look up to him in that aspect. And, uh, and I said, I love how you love God. And I said, would you like to say a prayer? And we said a prayer. And then on the mic, you know, you use your mic time to do a pretty amazing gesture. Talk about giving away 50% of your purse to charity. I'm just curious, I guess, kind of what your motivation, why that charity, and, and just, I mean, that's, that's not an insignificant amount of money, obviously. Yeah, um, Dana White um, came up to me after the fight, and he said, don't give your money. I'm going to give the $45,000. And uh, I'm still going to give some money, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But he told me, he said, don't give any of your money. It's going to be mine, and I'm going to take care of it. And uh, I'm still going to do something because I just need to. But there will be more than $45,000. We have people coming out of the woodwork. And uh, so I'm planting a seed, and um, we're going to watch this thing grow. And, you know, it's all about giving back. Like I said, this ain't going to be about just hurting people. When I'm done, we're going to help people. Why was that charity the one that was important to you? Well, there's, children are some of the most precious things on the planet, brother. I mean, um, and I, I see so much evil and wickedness in the world and so much greed and people killing for money, and it makes me sick. I want to do the exact opposite. And uh, do you know what the greatest thing that I can do in that cage is? It's inspire. That's the greatest thing that I can do in that cage is inspire people. And let me tell you why. Because... Me, by myself, I really can't do shit. My $45,000, when it comes to medical professions, really ain't shit. That shit's gone in one surgery. That shit's gone in a couple skin grafts. You see what I'm saying? But if I can inspire you and you and you and you and you, then it's limitless. You see what I'm saying? It keeps going. It's perpetual. And so the greatest thing that I can do is inspire and I really feel like I've done that, and I really feel like I owe that to God. That's pretty amazing. So is this going to be kind of a core philosophy for your, the rest of your fighting career? Every time I fight, there will be children healed um, through, 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 uh, through the fight, yeah. That's awesome. Last thing for me, obviously that's amazing, but we do have to talk about your fighting career. I mean, you're climbing up the ranks, right? I mean, uh, have you thought about, I know you want to heal up, take some time, but are there names? Is there a date? I mean, where do you feel like you belong? Now that you know you've picked up this big win, well, I feel like I want a title shot, but you know I'm I'm just waiting in the lunch line. You know I'm not going to try to cut in the lunch line. I'm I'm just doing everything that I got to do to earn my spot. And uh, you know obviously I'm going to say title shot if you ask me what I want. Where's Rovier? 
I don't know if you're someone that watches tape, but a lot of people online saying that this fight looked very reminiscent of Edson's fight against Habib. You know, he just couldn't get up for three rounds. So, A, are you someone that did watch tape and is that you saw weaknesses from his past fights that you could ex exploit? Yes. Uh, you know, you when you're watching an enemy, you need to... And he's no longer an enemy, by the way. He's my brother now, you know. It, we, but in, in that cage, in that 15 minutes, he is the enemy. And, yeah, you have to respect his strengths and you have to know his weaknesses and you have to know your strengths and you have to know your weaknesses you know that fight week is over how was this whole fight week experience for you you were pretty heavily like included in the embedded you got a big pop from the crowd Twenty thousand people just watched you beat edson barbosa so now that it's over how was fight week this whole experience for you really my vocabulary and my words and stuff really don't do it justice brother it was so amazing that I just feel like my life has a purpose, and it's awesome. Hey, Bryce, right here in the back. What's up, brother? Um, so I touched on a little bit uh, during media day, but I want to ask you, you know, you talked about one day you do want to see yourself, and you imagine yourself, what would it be like in those big fights, in the title fights, in the number one contender fights? And I want to ask you, how do you imagine it? When you think about how you see yourself there, what do you see in your imagination? I see myself having the ability to beat anybody. And of course, there's going to be obstacles, and anybody has the ability to beat me, too. That's the flip side of that coin. But um, through proper preparation and sacrifice and hard work, um, like I said, I have the ability to beat anybody. What parts are you, of your game are you most proud of in the growths that you've made in the gym and just growing as a martial artist? I'm the most proud of my people around me, the coaches and the teammates that have been with me since I started. And my final question, obviously faith is something, it's like a merry-go-round, you can't just be on when it's good, you have to be there when it's bad also. Just how do you keep your faith strong on tough times and in good ones? That's when my faith was the strongest is when I was at my lowest, actually. So you're absolutely right about that. That's what made me what I am and um, is reaching the lowest points in my life and then climbing back up. Thank you. Congratulations. Just to touch upon that a little bit, um, you said that you were a warrior of God. And I'm just wondering, at what point in your life did he recruit you? It was pretty recently, and uh, it was pretty amazing. How recent? Can you tell us a story? Within the last year, and there's a lot of stories with it, but, um, you know, when I, when I get down and I pray and I have proper prayer, um, there's been multiple times where I just feel like, just invigorated by, like, the Holy Spirit. Just, I, I feel invincible. Uh, last one from me. Uh, when you dropped to Edson, what was going through your mind then? I just remember to stay calm and not give up any position and not to uh, waste my gas because I know he can recover. And I knew he would recover, or he could. I, you know, I wanted to finish him, but um, I knew not to do anything stupid. And, and that's five years ago, I'd have gone crazy. You know, I'd have gone out there and just, um, but probably would have wasted my gas tank and gave him an opportunity to give up. So uh, I visualized doing that. I visualized dropping him. And I visualized, before I dropped him, I visualized dropping him. And uh, I visualized myself staying calm and, and making the most tactical decision that I could. I, I've got one more. Sorry about this. Um, what don't be you... sorry, brother. This is, this is what makes a sport, brother. You know, without people asking questions, we don't spread the word and we don't give people what they want what you gotta ask brother i'd love it <laughs> i was gonna ask what did you make to colby and masvidal did you think that fight went as expected i mean i wasn't i wasn't too surprised and uh, man they beat each other up i was surprised by that you know but um i knew that colby could wrestle and uh i was hoping that i, I thought that if Jorge, if Jorge would hold in the middle of the octagon and he wouldn't get pressed up on the cage. That's how he would stop takedowns, but he kept getting backed up to the cage. And um, 
So that was one thing I was kind of surprised about is that he, he could not hold the center um, as well as he wanted to, I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, man, they beat each other up. It, it was – that was a fight. Bryce, over here, uh, you had a pretty long layoff. Were you worried about ring rust at all? No, I actually felt um, a lot better in there for whatever reason. I didn't feel, like, nervous at all. And um, I think that's just part of me accepting my destiny and realizing who I am and what I'm supposed to do. You were recently on the uh, MMA Hour. What was the reception to that interview like? Oh, the Ariel Hawani's? Yeah. Well, he kind of, he didn't completely censor me, but he put that I was spreading misinformation and, um... I don't know, you know, I thought I, I said a lot of true stuff and but it's open to a debate and you know, um I love the second amendment and I love the first. And you know why we have the first? Because we have the second. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on the Canadian truckers at all? I love them. All right, thanks Bryce. All Thank for you. Me. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. Appreciate you guys and girls, ladies, I mean.